I've been getting a lot of requests for power-ups and how to accomplish that in Construct 2. So using my uh, model space shooter project, I'm going to show you how to add a power-up to one of your games. Um, specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to give this spaceship a shield that protects it from getting hurt, and then that uh, shield will um, wear off and it will become vulnerable again at some point. Um, so yes, this is about changing this specific game, but the things I'm going to show you apply to nearly any game you could create and power-ups in general. So let's get started. The first thing I did was I created myself a shield. Now, when it comes to your assets, when you're trying to figure out things in games, you just want to keep it really simple. This is just a basic sphere. So I'm in Inkscape, and I've got that checkered background. Sometimes when I'm making something that's see-through, I want a stage that's checkered so I can really see it. All you really have to do is look at this uh, circle tool, and if you press, I believe it's Control, while you pull on it, it'll make you a perfect circle. Once you have your selection tool in place, you can lock the dimensions of your circle. See how the dimensions of mine are perfect between width and height. You can make it whatever size you want and make sure it's set to pixels and you can basically set it whatever you like. If you go to the fill and stroke uh, menu, you will find that there are additional options. In my case, I decided to make my circle yellow. Um, I think I just clicked on this yellow right here. I changed the opacity to something um, relatively see-through. Some other things you can do is there's these uh, gradients and you can use like a mesh gradient or something like that to give your um, sphere a particular look. Once you have the sphere, the circle, whatever you want to call this that you want, all you really have to do is go to the export PNG image menu, name it, make sure it's the size that you want and simply press export. If it's already there, just replace it. What that's going to do, that's going to give you the raster that you can put into your game. Now we're ready to do the Construct 2 part. Okay, now I'm inside the Construct 2 game engine. The first thing I want to do is I need to create an object type, a sprite for my shield. And I'll just call that shield. And I want to make sure I put it on the right layer and all that stuff, but I can deal with that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and click on stage and using my folder, navigate to the shield I created in Inkscape. Notice how the origin point is in the center. That's definitely what I want. I am going to go ahead, I'm going to leave it on the FX layer, because that is above the spaceship. Okay, cool. Uh, I can change it whenever I want by saying move to layer. If I want to put it on the game, I most certainly could. Another way to change that is to come over here and say drop down game. All right, so there we are. If we go over here under object types, we should find shield. Now, we need to add a behavior. We're going to use the pin behavior. At some point, we're going to have to pin this shield to the spaceship and unpin it when necessary. So there we are. Okay. Now, originally, the shield is not going to be pinned. To get things started, I'm just going to go ahead and collapse some of my events, create myself a new group, my new event group is going to be about the shield. So I'm going to say add group. I'm going to call it shield. And it's going to be events and actions that enable disable the shield. First event I'm going to add is really just to get things started. When the spaceship collides with the shield, I'm going to go ahead and position the shield and pin it onto the spaceship. Now, how someone gets their power up in your game is up to you, but this is just to facilitate the testing and to show you how things work. Let's add the actions. First thing I need to do is in my game, there is a special Boolean instance variable on the spaceship that tells you whether it's vulnerable. Now, the minute I have the shield, I'm no longer vulnerable, so we're going to set that to false. The next thing we need to do is we need to position our shield. So choose shield, and you will see that there is under size and position an action called set position. We are going to position the shield to the X and Y coordinate of the spaceship. The spaceship has an origin point that's right in the center of it, 
So when we position it, that'll put um, the shield right on top of it. And then last but not least, at least for this one, we need to pin the shield to the spaceship so that as the spaceship moves, the shield stays right on top of it. So we're going to go ahead and say shield. Remember how we added that pin behavior. Now we'll be able to pin to the spaceship. All right, let's go ahead and play the game, see what happens. There we are. Looks like I made it a little too close. So let's go back to construct two. Let's go back to the level. Let's take this up there. A little bit further up the layout. Okay. So as you can see, right in front of me is the shield. I have to collide with it. And when I do, it will pin to the shield. And you can see that nothing's hurting me because my game already has functionality where I've set the spaceship to not be vulnerable. So I need to refine my event sheet a little bit. So there may be more than one shield on the layout. And so I need to make sure that on collision with shield also takes into account the fact that there might already be a shield pinned to the spaceship. So I'm going to add another condition and I'm going to look for when the shield is not pinned. So I'm going to choose is pinned and then I'm going to invert that condition. So basically what I'm saying here is that when the spaceship collides with the shield and there is not already a shield that's pinned to the spaceship, go ahead set the spaceship to vulnerable false, position that shield and pin it. Okay. So as I write these events, I always like to comment in this particular case, what does this event do? This event adds the shield. All right. So this is pretty basic functionality, but we don't have anything that um, has a countdown that actually, um, allows the power up to be applied for a short period of time. We don't have anything that takes away the shield. And so now we have to deal with that. Let's go ahead to our, go back to our spaceship and let's look at this instance variables. Right now I'm controlling all types of things on the spaceship. This gives me a lot of, um, I can exercise a lot of control over the game. We're going to add another instance variable. In this case, we're going to call it power up. I need a variable that stores, um, how long the uh, shield can be used for, but I could use this instance variable for anything in any particular situation. As always, I'm going to give a description. Time remaining on power up. Awesome. So in addition to um, giving my spaceship the shield, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this power up instance variable on the spaceship for as long as I wanted to have the shield. And then we're going to add some events and actions which are going to uh, make all that magic happen. So we're going to set the value of the power up instance variable on the spaceship. And this should represent the number of seconds we want to have the shield. So I'm going to go ahead and just set it to 10. And now I'm going to need to add some events that are going to um, actually control this so that there's only 10 seconds um, on the power up. So let's add an event. We want to know whenever the spaceship has the power up. And that's going to be whenever power up is greater than zero. And go ahead and drag that into the event group. What we want to do, as long as the power up is in effect, we need to subtract time away from the power up. So we're going to go in to spaceship and we are going to subtract from its power up instance variable. And we're going to subtract DT. DT means delta time. The only way to keep track of time in games is to measure the time between each frame because the number of frames that are generated and drawn to the user's screen is variable. It can change. But as long as we know the time between the frame that we're drawing now and the last one, we can recreate what we call clock time so we can figure out how much time has elapsed in the game. So when the power up is set to something like 10, this event right here, every tech is going to check for whether the power up is greater than zero. As long as it is, it's going to keep subtracting time from it. And then we're going to need an event that looks to see whether the power up is over. So we're going to click add event spaceship. And we are going to compare the instance variable of power up whenever it is less than or equal to zero. That means the uh, power up has ended. When the power up ends, we need to make the spaceship vulnerable again. 
So we are going to set the Boolean vulnerable to true so the spaceship can be hurt. We are going to go ahead and destroy the shield. And the other thing we're going to want to do is we need to make sure that we're only doing this once. And the way to ensure that we do this only once is to check to see whether the shield is pinned. So if the power up is over and there is a shield attached to the spaceship, set the spaceship vulnerable to true and destroy that shield. Let's go ahead and play it and see where we're at. So here we are. My shield is right in front of me. I'm going to collect that. There we go. Now I've got about 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, I should see this go away. And now I shouldn't be protected anymore. Let's see if that's the case. Come and get me, Meteor. Bam. Okay. On to the next step. Okay, I took a moment to go back and I added some comments. So this event, the one on uh, line 34, basically says if time left on power up countdown, subtract ET. When power up ends, that's what we do here. Um, the problem now is that we don't really know when the power up is going to end. And so it's really important that there be something that signifies to the player that they're about to lose their invulnerability. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our shield and we're going to add another behavior. We're going to add a behavior called flash. Okay. And what we're going to do is when there is, let's say three seconds or less, we're going to make the uh, spaceship start flashing. We're going to do that by making the shield flash. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our spaceship. Once again, we're using that power up um, instance variable. You can do this however you want, but I'm going to say, hey, if there is less than or equal to, let's say, three seconds on the power up, then I want to make the shield flash. Let's do that. Shield flash. How long do I want it to flash for? Uh, probably three seconds because there'll be three seconds left on the power up and then we can change the on and off times to change the look and feel. There we go. Now power up will be less than or equal to three many many times and so we need to add some other conditions to make sure this fires only once. So whenever the shield is uh, not flashing that will give us the ability because if it's already flashing we don't want to uh, make it flash again. And then we also want to make sure that if power up is zero, let's say there's no power up at all and the shield has been replaced or destroyed altogether that we don't try to make it flash. So another thing we can do, another condition that needs to be met in order for us to start the flash will be that the shield is pinned. So if the power up is less than three, if the shield's not already flashing and um, if it is pinned, then we should make it flash. Just to speed up the testing of this, I'm going to go ahead and just put a five on this and let's play it. Here we are. I'm going to go up here and grab my shield and bam, here we are. Now you see it starts to flash when there's three seconds left and then my protection is gone. Wait for some meteors to get close. Grab it. See how I'm protected? Still protected. And then not. All right, as you can see, I've gone back and I've put a comment on here. So I've got the part where we add the shield. I've got where we do the countdown. I've got the part where the power up ends and we got to get rid of the shield and make the spaceship vulnerable again. And then I have the last part of the power up, is, which is something that you can use to signify to the player that um, they're about ready to lose their power up. Now I want you to get creative with this. This can be applied to any game and there's really no limit to how far you can take the idea of a power up. So let's say that I get this shield. I don't just have to, I'm not just limited to making the spaceship uh, vulnerable or invulnerable. Let's say I added some other action and let's say I wanted to um, speed up the scroller. The scroller is the part in this game that um, drags the spaceship across the uh, layout. So let's say you got your power up and not only were you invincible, but you also went really fast. The only thing to that 
is that you need to make sure that when the power up ends that you put it back to whatever the speed it was before. So what I just did was I said, okay, once I have my power up, make this um, spaceship go much faster. And when the power up is over, return the spaceship to its regular speed. So let's go ahead and debug this. All right, once again, if we look at our variables, let's say on the spaceship, there we go. So there's all the instance variables. Go ahead and grab that. You can see that the power up is counting down. See the speed. And then once I lose, I'm going slow again and I can be hurt. Another thing to keep in mind here is you want to make sure that you test this for having, let's say, multiple shields. Let's go ahead and play this. So here I am. I'm going to go up and get this shield. There I am. Okay. I'm going to lay back for a minute. Pretty soon I'm going to lose my ability. And now I've got another one I can go get. There we are. And everything just works perfectly. All right. There you go. That's how to add a power up to your game.